Hello, sexy souls, and welcome to another episode of the Move with Love podcast. I am April Miranda, your host, your healer, your guide, and I am so excited. It is such a treat to have the Marine Bodine today. She has been from Spartan and Tough Mudder racing to creating panel discussions that fuse unlikely topics such as tattooing and mental health. Marie Bodine is driven to explore the uncommon. Through practicing and teaching the Wim Hof Method principles, Marie influences others to heighten their creativity, elevate productivity, delete stress, and develop unshakable inner peace. Welcome to the show, Marie Bodine. April, I'm so excited to be here. How are you today? Oh, I am just so excited to interact with you because every conversation we have, whether it's in person, whether it's through text or over the phone, like I always feel so lit up, inspired and clear. So you have that power. <laughs> It feels fun to feel better, doesn't it? (laughs) It does. And so thank you for saying yes to being a guest. And whoever's listening to this episode, um, you're in for a treat. So um, let me, let's just, let's just start talking. What's lighting you up right now? Ooh, you know, it's funny because we've had a few conversations, not only uh, together, but even in the Tomorrow Today community at some of the live events and the retreats that we've been a part of together. I've I've known you for a while and it's really interesting and wonderful to see people grow and evolve. And as we ask each other and ourselves questions, how can I live my life with a little bit more ease and a little bit less conflict? Many different ways comes up, but I think what we're starting to see now is the more we go outside of ourselves and expect people or ask or request people to change for us so that we can feel better, we end up often less happy and with more conflict, not only with that person, but within ourselves. I'm seeing it more and more now. See a lot of people that are really feeling something inside that they're not completely comfortable with. Most of the time it's just growth (laughs) because we can't feel great all the time. Sometimes feeling not great is a sign for our body to tell us that something can change, improve, evolve, devolve, what have you. Mm -hmm. But it's really a request for us to do something different, not to ask someone else to do something for us so that we can feel better. It kind of diminishes their power and it doesn't strengthen the bonds between us. And I've seen that, um, yeah, a lot. So obviously breathing helps, but many other hormetic practices take us from a stressed state to a more balanced state. So that's what I've been up to lately. Mm, And conversation with you is always deep and profound. It's never (laughs) the fluffy stuff. So like even just with hearing you what you said before, it's like a little bit of what we had a little chat about with like the self-healing, the self-awareness kind of muscle or part in your brain. And we talked about the victim mentality and the taking responsibility, exactly what you said, like taking ownership and, you know, honoring that we're the ones that need to change to make the shifts out there. So um, can you elaborate on, I guess, what advice would you give to someone who doesn't have that self-awareness or doesn't have that idea that they're the ones with the power to change and shift? Wow, what a great question. So usually if someone is right at the beginning of that introspective journey, one of the things that I love to ask people to ask themselves is, you know, what do you see out in the world that's not working? What do you see out in the world that you're not happy about? And what do you see out in the world that you want to change? And once you get really clear on those things, generally, what I've seen in patterns is those things that are bothering you are things within yourself that need resolution or, or more love. Or, or a shift. So anything that's bothering us with other people is usually something that we're working through ourselves. Your outer world is a reflection of your inner thinking. So if you're having a lot of arguments, um, 
you've heard this before, April and other people. I mean, you're the common denominator, but what's your role? What's your role in the conflict? And and it takes a rather mature person to ask that question. If you really want to grow, no matter how unpleasant the answer, <laughs> the question could be, what's your role? How were you an active participant in that conflict, in that upset, in that friction moment, in that um, uh, the outcome that you might not have wanted, but got anyway, you know, what's there for you to learn and how did you play a part? It takes some time sometimes for people to pick apart. We just talked about this recently. It took me years sometimes to realize some of those things that I did at the time I refused to want to see that I was the, not just the co-creator, I was the full creator. <laughs> I was a full creator of that shitty moment. And, you know, through insight, it took me a long, long time to figure out how and why I did that. My role with with people and the clients that I see and the people that come to my classes and my groups is uh, my wish is for people to come to those insights a lot faster with a lot less suffering so we can get to a place where our lives function and work more smoothly and the people around us are living with us with a little bit more harmony and we're not blaming other people for how our lives are going there's a lot of blame going on we can look at the wars going on right now we can look at whatever the pharmaceutical industry is doing fill in the blank we can talk about you know our barky neighbor's dog noisy all the time we can talk about the person living below us that's you know having sex at two in the morning and keeping us up like what are we aligning with right <laughs> so although all those things look like we're not any part of it we're all connected so there's always ways to really get quiet as you know meditation helps but simple breathing practices and really having a life vision knowing who you are and knowing what you want is going to get you closer to that peaceful life mm -hmm. and yeah so talking about living the peaceful life what do you feel would be the biggest blockage of when desiring that peaceful life or you talked about like you want to get to one point with less suffering so what do you think would be the root cause of that suffering or the biggest blockage that prevents them from living this fulfilled, peaceful life? Okay. We're going to, we're going to explain that backward because I've never said it like this. So the people that are listening that have listened to me speak in other arenas and other podcasts are going to want to listen to this. I've never explained it this way. We usually have something that we want to control, fix, or change. We take a step back. The seed to that would be anticipatory fear. When we take a step back, the seed that grows that is a lack of trust. We take a step back even further. We're looking at complete and total separation from ourselves, the universe, the planet, or other people. So I would say separation is really something that when you really distill it down to the complete basis of all the things that are causing grief war, sadness, unnecessary suffering. A lot of it is because we're not really recognizing that we're all one unit here on the planet. We're all connected. We're all connected not only through the planet and the elements, but through vibrational energy, the quantum realm, and all the vibrational, you know, brain and body signals, that electromagnetic field that we, uh, some people are recogn recognize the Taurus field, we're all connected there too. So as soon as we understand that what we do affects not just ourselves, but everyone around us, then we can start taking micro steps mm -hmm. to love ourselves a little bit more and love the strangers that we meet on the street. And then here's the hard part, loving something negative that someone throws at us. That's tough. Mm. Wow. I love how you said just to step back, yeah. step back. And I, I like also using the term like zooming out, like seeing the big picture, because, <laughs> you know, we can get stuck in all, all the details and our own little bubble, but it's like attachment to the physical. When you say, when you just kind of create space, know that we're all connected in this quantum realm. I love how you mentioned the electromagnetic field because um, even you talking about it and scaling back backwards, 
ah, it made me breathe. It made, and I hope the audience who's listening be like, oh yeah, like this, that stranger, that pedestrian, that driver, like it doesn't really matter because we are all part of the same big picture. Um, I wanted you to elaborate on, yeah, with the, the trap and how we can avoid this trap of the future focus thinking. Can you please elaborate on that? Well, yeah, I mean, I have a lot of opinions about it. So I'll give you a slice of that today. So, you know, when we look at anticipatory fear or when we look at future thinking, we're really starting to now understand that the brain really likes to be busy, but the body doesn't always love to, to be as busy as as the mind. And being that really overly busy, grinding away, grinding away, planning things, the, the goal-oriented and the production-oriented culture that you and I live in right now isn't the norm for other tribes and cultures. <laughs> so let's get that out of the way. Mm -hmm. When we start looking at advertising and we start looking at media, the way media is spoon fed to us day in and day out, like I can't go to a restaurant and go to the bathroom and sit down without reading an ad <laughs> in front of my face. So 24 seven, unless I'm sleeping, mm -hmm. I'm in the, the, the crosshairs of a potential advertisement. Can't go anywhere without seeing an ad now. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. So the brain is in the eyes are taking in all these bits of information. And most of these um, messages are designed to sell us something that we already have. Beauty, health, wisdom, strength, creativity. Like we're all creative. We're all beautiful. We all have aspects of health in, inside of us. And so anything that I buy is designed to give me back something that I probably don't lack or I already have. But somehow, over and over again, these advertisements wear us down. And then we start believing things um, because we've forgotten to, again, to, to look inward first. We're always looking outside the landscape. And what we interpret with our eyes isn't always the first method to gathering information. When we drop down to the heart and listen to the heart, I mean, you know this, when we sit with the heart and ask the heart questions, we don't get confusing, uh, confusing answers. We get direct, succinct, loving answers. So if I have a question that I want to ask myself, um, you know, am I asking it from here or am I asking my, my whole body? Because your whole body has consciousness. And I think today is a good reminder um, for the people listening to you know, when you're asking yourself a question about what you should do, where in your body is that question coming from? And are you including your entire body in the answer that comes to your mind? So advanced thinking comes from not understanding that you have infinite power, infinite creativity, your value doesn't go up and down with how you produce or, or the, the money in your bank account. Mm -hmm. um, some people probably won't like that. I just said that because it, it challenges their, their way of living. And yeah, we want to challenge you lovingly to really start looking at the drivers in your life. If you're not feeling happy, if you're not feeling like you belong, if you're feeling like you're less than, and if you're feeling like you're taking substances to self-soothe or to stop feeling feelings. Mm. Wow. If you're listening, I'm going to invite you to rewind that and listen to that all again. Because <laughs> that was some juicy, juicy stuff. And I, I have to tell you this, this morning, I was feeling, feeling all these things that you were talking about because Bella started daycare. And it was like this navigation of the last two years. I'm like, okay, I'm a new mom, but I had all these entrepreneurial ideas and this book. And it's like so many things, but I couldn't get to it because I was being a mom. And then I adapted, adapted being nurturing and honoring the divine feminine energy. And then, you know, giving myself grace to rest. And then now she's having fun and playing and learning and developing, you know, new skills. And then here I was, I'm like, hmm, what do I do now? <laughs> you know what I'm, and I felt like I was having a little midlife crisis because I'm like, who am I? If, if I'm not a mom right now, I'm like, I could oh, clean, yeah. but I don't want to clean. Yeah. But I'm like, hmm, and I'm like, okay, I just had to sit. And I'm like, I know I have this podcast recording with Marie. Let's just create space 
for that. Let's just get ready for that. And I know trusting that flow, trusting the, the unfolding that I knew that this was going to be magical and I already feel it on a energetic level. So thank you for, thank you for that beautiful reminder of like, yeah, our worthiness is not dictated by how productive we are. <laughs> yeah. Well, you good point. And I'm going to add to that. Even April, your identity isn't tied to a word. Mm. Truth bomb right there. Like whatever mm-hmm. you think you are, it's, it's not in a word. <laughs> you know, that, how long did it take me to get to realize that in my life right wow tell me how the many, journey that got you to that how yes. many lists did I create the things who I wanted to be all the things in a day I wanted to get done it was freaking exhausting and you know and it never got me there all the people I tried to please that didn't work no matter what I did it n- never worked I could have been I could have been all the gods and all the the religious leaders rolled into one and it would, wouldn't have been enough. And I just thought, okay, this isn't working. I'm going to take, I'm going to take a hold of that wheel and hard left. And I'm just going to go do this because I feel drawn and, and led to go do something that is now coming from a different place in my body. I'm going to go with the truth of how I want to show up for myself. And I'm just going to flip it to everybody because and that's not working anyway. So I might as well just do this, everything that they hated that I was doing in the first place. So I might as well go back to that. And that took me over. Oh, oh, wow. After the friction stopped, it took 40 years for me to get to that place where, you know, I was very young and all creative and and, and all the, the brightness that we have as, as children. And then authority figures, school, media, like I mentioned, and then people in positions of power. Uh, smashing down the creativity and structured environments out of fear of looking responsible for my behavior. I don't know why people are taking that on. We can stop that right now if we want to. That's a choice. And then really just choosing to exercise, make making mistakes, falling down and getting scraped. Listen, we're all gonna we're all gonna get broken up with. Most of us are gonna be fired. Me multiple times. <laughs> it's it's a process, right? It's a process mm-hmm. of learning. To me, getting fired is the universe saying that's not actually not the best job for you. Let's pave the way and make it wide open right now so you can find something more productive. And you know, we, it's just a perception issue. Instead of going, oh, I'm not worthy to, to have this job, it's sort of like, oh, that was a misalignment. Let me find something that actually works out better. And it it always it always does if you're l- listening to all of your body. So I don't have all the answers, but I know for sure that when we're not really just living our truth from all the parts of our body, especially asking our heart what what our body wants, then we're missing all kinds of beautiful, extremely valuable information that we can use to express ourselves, to have a more aligned life that functions, that gives us jobs and relationships that that work for us and that we're going to like long-term and also those people, places, and things are going to help us grow the most and, and suffer, uh, intelligently. You've heard me say that before. We know we're going to suffer in life. Let's just stop trying to stop that because it's, it's going to happen. There's pain and destruction and suffering (laughs) all over the place, but can we make it mean something and can we use it and transform it to something loving? Absolutely, we can. Does it take practice? Yes. How do we do that? We start breathing firstly. We get connected to our breath. We stop thinking so much. And then we sit on our asses and we meditate so that we can get quiet and develop that deep, beautiful, powerful relationship with feelings, which is the language of the body. And when we quiet all the word part, which is basically here, you know that when we quiet that part, then we can directly plug in to access of tons and tons of other wisdom and information that's waiting for us to connect into from, from the neck down. How does that sound? Mm, Oh, I, I resonate. And, but even with, yeah, the podcast called move with love, because I even met you when you were like a fitness instructor, I was yoga teacher. Like, so that was a quote unquote title that we had back then you know, so I know very physical, but now, yeah, you were mentioning like dropping into the heart, listen to the feelings and the entire body. So it's like, it's like this visceral sensation when you say them, like, yeah, like the wisdom is not just here in the brain when you're like dropping out of the mind and into the body, out of the mind and into the heart. And 
even the big consciousness, but um, I, I, you probably already answered this, but what does move with love mean to you? You made a really beautiful point. I mean, just using the brain is a very Victorian antiquated way of approaching daily life right now. So mm -hmm. now that we're, we're past that move with love really to me now means understanding that each organ, each, each system, each plant, each animal, all the elements of the earth, they all have consciousness at some on, on some level, everything's vibrating. Mm -hmm. Everything is vibrating. So when we start to look at different parts of the body, when we're looking at wellness and, and unwellness, does, disease doesn't, you know, float around the air and land on us. We, we develop it because we're not in, in balance. Mm -hmm. So move with love means to me, exploring the relationship with the rest of the world and us and creating harmony with both. Wow. Yeah. Just letting that statement sit. So many truth bombs in these statements that just went after another with you. Um, tell me about this inner peace portal that you created. So the inner peace portal really is an answer to all the stressed out people that I've met over the past couple of years. Let's just say uh, 2019 was when I started teaching the Wim Hof method. If people are interested in finding out more about that, Wim Hof method.com is the website. There's also a YouTube page with over a million subscribers. There's a beautiful app that people can download also to learn how to breathe effectively and use gradual cold exposure as a way to upregulate their immune system. Uh, there's a lot of science on that. Um, and so the inner peace portal is, is really a response for the people that, don't necessarily want or are able to access hypoxic breath holds. It's not always for everyone. There are some uh, limitations as far as health. And for people that will never, ever take a, an ice bath or a cold shower, we still want to be able to plug into to peace anytime, anywhere. Uh, waking up in the morning, a great way to set up your day is through a meditation, getting quiet and setting your intention for the day. And also for sleep. Sleep is is a hugely, massively important and valuable repair time for the body and the mind and the energy field. It's when you start building up a lot of your energy. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we want to be able to also give people access to wind down time so that they can have the best sleep ever. Cause you never see on social media. I crushed it at my sleep last night. <laughs> like nobody's bragging about the, the, you know, how they rocked their sleep. Mm -hmm. And so it would be kind of fun if we could see more people appreciating this very magical, very important superpower uh, of sleep time, because that's really the only time that you're able to build up energy, repair, and cl clean your brain. That's really the only time that you can do it is when you're unconscious and you're trusting everything because you're unconscious and you're connecting to all because you're unconscious. That's what people are starting to discover now with brainwaves. So it's going to give you some recordings. It's going to give you 24 access to my voice, which is kind of fun for the people that like my voice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we're going to have a once a month get together with a breath of meditation session on Zoom. And we'll be able to talk about anything that's in people's fields that they're struggling with so that they can feel less separated, less alone, so that there's a community there and they can continue to get up day after day and, and you know, test the waters with how they want to express themselves with their their life visions a lot of people they're not clear about what they really want in life so often meditation helps people get more clear because we're quieting those mind uh the mind chatter and then we can have an opportunity to invite more ideas they come out of nowhere supposedly but they're really just flying around all over the place oh sign me up for this inner mm -hmm. peace portal because i i am really loving sleep like my dreams are getting more vivid and i could feel my I feel like it's like, that's where we connect to our innate healing power and we do yeah. some energetic housekeeping, like exactly what you said, but um, yeah, I'm down to celebrate sleep <laughs> when we, when we rock it and let that mind just um, rest. Cause we are bombarded with so many things. Um, so the inner peace portal, is it a website? Is it a community? Is it a course? Um, 
Tell it's me launching more. now, actually. It's almost ready. So for, for people that are actually listening to this recording, it's July now. So um, if you're listening after, it, it, it should, should be up. Go to mariebodine.com. You'll see a link there that outlines the Inner Peace Portal. And I think one of the main reasons why I created it is because I saw a lot of people that were just really stressed and not feeling good. They felt that doing more was the answer and actually doing less is a superpower obviously but mm -hmm. it's really you know we we need to pace ourselves we can't we can't keep running with our our foot on the gas to the floor all the time and expect the body to sustain that it it doesn't really work we're using at least 20 percent of everything that we eat to fuel the brain the thinking brain and overthinking gets us really tired <laughs> you know we have decision fatigue for sure and i think um it's almost blasphemy for people to say, what are, you, what are you saying, Marie? You mean I have to do less things? But the, the body isn't designed to work that hard for, for that long. We, we need breaks, and it's really, really important. And people, you'll be more productive when you take more breaks and, and very short breaks of meditation and deep diaphragmatic breathing. It's going to get more oxygen in your brain, so be able to refocus and stay creative throughout the day and also have less unnecessary stress less conflict and you'll be able to be open to more ideas. So if you're at work and something changes last minute, I don't know if that's ever happened to anybody, <laughs> you'll be able to switch gears and not feel like your idea just got blown, you know, pop, blown past. You'll be able to feel like you'll be able to adapt more easily. And that's what we really need right now. We, we need to be able to pivot quickly with some self uh, respect and, and some grace so that like circling back to the beginning of this podcast, we're not pointing fingers. We're taking responsibility for our feelings because we are the ones that are feeling our feelings, not, not somebody else. So that's why it's there. Yeah. I invite anyone to, to just jump over to the website and take a look. And if they have any questions, you can also email me hello at mariebodine.com. Wow. And yeah, I was just going to ask, like, where can our listeners find you? But you said the website and you said the email, but um, any other places where um, the audience can get to know you, reach out and connect? Yeah, thanks for asking. So Instagram is marie.bodine. And for people that are interested in Wim Hof Method uh, events or one-on-one -on -one coaching, private events, public events, if you want to host an event at your place, I'm, I'm all my stuff is portable. I can travel. You can Google my uh, instructor page. So if you just Google Marie Bodine and Wim Hof, it'll take you right to my instructor page on the official Wim Hof Method website where you'll be able to see uh, some of my events. I've got something coming up in September in Markdale, Ontario. We're, we're going to be all staying together under one roof. It's going to be saunas, uh, hot tubs, ice baths, a lot of journaling, a lot of uh, rituals and conversation um, so that we can really start to reset and get more clear on what's important to us so that we can lead with our hearts and, and, and have a, a good life. We all want to have a, a really good, healthy, happy life. And uh, taking the time to do some introspection is is the key to to get there. I fully I fully believe that we're never going to feel better unless we get better at feeling uh, feelings, April. And I know that you're a master at that. So I wanted to thank you too, and celebrate you for having this podcast and also having me on as, as a guest today. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, your experience and your magic. Um, yeah, please reach out, find her at mariebodine.com. Follow her on Instagram because she's truly a gift, whether it's one-on-one -on -one interactions or group activations. Um, please follow her and connect with her. Um, any final notes, Marie, to those, the audience who will be listening to this across time and space around the world, what would you want them leaving? What are your wise words? I want people to realize that I want you to give yourself a lot more credit than you're giving yourselves right now. You you made it another day on this really wild roller coaster called planet Earth. You know, we're spinning at over 900 miles in an hour. I, I don't know how we're, it's fast. And I want you to give yourself some credit for for continuing to be open to to growing and and making that effort of being here, it, it's a little bit sticky right now on, on the planet. I, I encourage everyone just to give themselves a pat on the back for still being here and still seeing the the value and 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 
the the journey and uh, love yourself just a little bit more and love each other. And I'm really excited to see people um, in the portal and, you know, reach out to me if you have a question. I would love to connect to send you some extra links where we're, you're not alone. We're, we're all in this together and I see you and uh, I'm just really glad that you're on the planet with us. Well, until next time, thank you so much for joining us, Marie. Let's continue to share the message adapt the mindset, live the lifestyle. Let's move with love together. Namaste.